Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on TCM as we continue with tonight's lineup featuring some of the great directors who have worked for Warner Brothers. We're focused on two seminal filmmakers tonight. In a couple of hours, we'll have a double feature from Stanley Kubrick, Full Metal Jacket and Clockwork Orange. But first, the back half of a Martin Scorsese double feature. We just had Ellen Burstyn and Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, a full Warner Brothers studio production. Up next, the picture Scorsese made before that, an independent film distributed by Warner's that led Burston to pick Scorsese to direct Alice. From 1973, Harvey Keitel and Robert De Niro star in Mean Streets. The screenplay, which Scorsese wrote with Marduk Martin, is largely inspired by Scorsese's experiences growing up in Little Italy in New York, a colorful world of small-time mobsters and wannabe gangsters, a place where everybody is trying to be a tough guy. Keitel plays one of those tough guys, Charlie conflicted about his criminal life and his Catholic faith. Spends much of his time trying to keep his volatile friend, Johnny Boy, that's the Nero, out of trouble. The story's not autobiographical, but Scorsese says Mean Streets was an attempt to put himself and his old friends up on a movie screen. It was motivated by advice he received from filmmaker John Cassavetes, who told Scorsese to tell the stories he wanted to tell rather than making movies based on somebody else's vision. Before Mean Streets, Scorsese had directed Boxcar Bertha, starring Barbara Hershey, low-budget 1972 feature for B-movie producer Roger Corman. That might have been somebody else's vision, but it taught Scorsese that it was possible to shoot a good movie inexpensively. Mean Streets has an edgy, unpolished feel that was more a product of necessity than design. Scorsese couldn't afford to shoot much in New York. Los Angeles, which is not like New York really in any way, had to stand in for New York in several scenes. Scorsese also burned half the film's budget to pay for the rights to the contemporary music he wanted in his picture. All his decisions, as you're about to see, pay off on screen. From 1973, this is Martin Scorsese's Main Streets. Mean Streets made a big impression when released in 1973. Several critics favorably compared it to the exciting new work of Scorsese's friends, like Francis Ford Coppola, who had made The Godfather, Peter Bogdanovich, who had directed The Last Picture Show, and George Lucas, who made American Graffiti. A few writers also pointed out that these young, gifted directors were among the first to be trained at film schools, NYU in Scorsese's case, rather than coming up through the studio system. Despite the good reviews, Mean Streets did not fare well at the box office, something producer Jonathan Taplin attributed to Warner Brothers. He argued that because the studio didn't have a large financial stake in the film, it marketed the movie without an ounce of aggression or enthusiasm. Scorsese explained at a seminar at the American Film Institute that he believed the distribution problems were due to the film's complex theme, the filmmaker's inexperience, and Warner Brothers' deeper interest in its own big-budget productions like The Exorcist. Coming up, our salute to Warner Brothers' 100th anniversary shifts from one dynamic and influential filmmaker, Martin Scorsese, to another, Stanley Kubrick. We've got a Kubrick double feature, starting with his haunting drama about the Vietnam War. Matthew Modine, Vincent D'Onofrio, R. Lee Ermey, Adam Baldwin, and Arliss Howard star in Full Metal Jacket, next on TCM.